Thank you, Graham. We'll be on in just a moment. There we go. Thanks, Graham. And thanks, Janelle. Oh, my gosh. Have, has anyone seen the Mona Lisa? Rach and I went. If you are ever in Paris, um, go in the night time because um, the Louvre is open like on, I think it's a Thursday night. And if you go there, all the crowds are gone. And we just got to stand like right in front of it instead of like being the 14th row back. But I can't believe how small it is. It's tiny. It's only like this big. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. So, um, yeah, really grateful to Janelle for um, sharing that with us. I also wanted to give a shout out to Reese, who is on the sound desk. And for those of you who are at home, you can't see him. But um, Reese is Karen and Stephen's nephew and he is going to be here volunteering on our teams um, this year as part of his Duke of Ed um, award. So it's really great to have you with us, Reese. Fantastic. Reese is also, when he was younger, he was part of our kids' church. So he kind of, you know, he knows us here. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really great. Um, I'll tell you something funny. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. Reese is now going to be the expert and can, uh, yeah, teach everyone on the sound desk. Um, do you know the funny thing is, I, so I decided, you know, uh, to be honest and full of integrity today because when I was, um, I haven't played my, I hadn't led worship for, for a little while actually and um, I could hear something buzzing on my watch, you know, it's the new day, isn't it? The, the whatever brand of watch you might have, it sort of speaks to you. I had the opportunity to record an outdoor run, which it thought I was doing because I was strumming the guitar. And I just want to say I chose to dismiss it because I thought I'm not actually running. So there you go. I just want to share that. I'm feeling very righteous about that. But anyway, <laughs> it kind of flows in with where I'm about to go. But um, look, on Wednesday morning, um, I made my less than triumphant return to Pilates um, for 2022. So I decided to have the month of January off and um, then I couldn't quite get motivated for that first class. And so the kind of the first of February came and went and then the second week of February and then the third week of February, I was like, oh no, I'm just really, I think last Sunday I sat down on my laptop and I'm like just booked in a couple of weeks worth of classes because I'm like, once I've done that, I have to turn up. And um, to be honest, when I did turn up for my first class on Wednesday morning, I felt like it had been six months instead of six weeks. And I was really nervous about how sore I was going to be, which I have been um, this week. But the funny thing is, I was reflecting on this. I'm like, Pilates is one of my favourite things to do. Like, it helps me to feel strong and it's partially responsible for... Stephen and I were just having a chat about this this morning. Partially responsible for, um, you know, helping get rid of my frozen shoulder. So I knew that it was good for me. But I was tired and I lacked motivation. And on reflection, I think it's because I got out of the rhythm of going there twice a week. And um, the longer that I waited, this is the funny thing, isn't it, with exercise, the longer I waited, the tireder that I became, which is strange because you'd think that having a rest would give you more energy. But as we know, even a light walk around the block actually makes you feel more energised than sitting on the couch or even walking around your living room a couple of times and, you know, doing a few stretches. And to be honest, the start of this year kind of made me feel a bit weary. <laughs> um, it kind of feels like we've had months of 2022 um, instead of just under two. And I was actually on holidays for the first month, so I don't know what that says about the, the, the last three weeks. <laughs> but they've been a bit of a whirlwind. And, and reading the word can actually be a little bit similar. You know, we take strength from it, we enjoy it, I'm sure most people, I mean, I certainly enjoy it. But when we get out of our rhythm, you know, we can get weary and sometimes we find it hard to get back into the rhythm. And of course, scripture, the word of God is spiritual food for us, just like our three meals a day um, are the, the food that nourishes our physical bodies. Jeremiah 15 verse 16 says, when your words came, I ate them. They would joy, my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness um, by Satan to eat bread, um, quoting the book of Deuteronomy, he responded with these words. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So scripture is life to us. 
And of course, you know, the whole canon, the whole Bible brings that life. But I wanted to remind us of some key scriptures that I believe really refresh and uplift us. Um, and, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of like we're taking a double dose of vitality. This is what I thought. Because, like, it's spiritual life to us anyway because it's scripture. But it's also scripture that particularly invigorates us. So I probably won't be, you know, in Leviticus or some of the other scriptures that might be a little tougher for us. Because I'm like, no, I want scripture that's going to refresh us and invigorate us. Um, now, I realise that the Winter Olympics are on at the moment. I've only kind of seen it out of the corner of my eye. Has anyone been watching the Winter Olympics? I mean, we've, we've won some medals, which is amazing when you think about it, isn't it? Um, but did anyone watch the Summer Olympics, the weightlifting um, from Tokyo? I mean, I spent a bit of time watching that. I was watching, st I, was, I don't know, I watched it for a couple of hours a few times and um, particularly I was watching these women. I just, it was incredible um, what they lift when I think about my... <laughs> five kilo weights, you know, um, that I lift. But, you know, it takes such an effort for them to, to lift those heavy bars with those huge weights on them. And in between lifts, you know, I'm, I don't know if you've seen, they kind of go to this room and they just like sit there and their teams around them, getting them ready, you know, for, for you know, visualising, they're visualising their next big effort, right? And just before they head out onto the mat... Their team comes around them and they start slapping them on the back. I'm like, oh my goodness. And then someone sticks smelling salts under their nose. Have you seen it? They're like, they're just waiting there to go out and they're all focused. And someone's like, yeah, you can do it. And they're like, you know, oh, off they go. And they get this burst of ammonia um, that apparently helps the body ignore fatigue and pain, allowing them to lift more weight. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? You'd think it'd be a banned substance, <laughs> but it's not. Um, when I thought about the impact of reading scripture each morning or any other time, it occurred to me that it's kind of like some smelling salts to start the day. I don't know about you, but I'm not really like that sort of awake in the morning. But I just know that if I kind of even I oh, read the verse of the day... <laughs> <laughs> uh, which we really try to read the verse of the day or even watch that little video and then, you know, then I'll sit down I'll sort of after I've like had a cup of tea or been for a walk and read my, read, read sort of my passage of scripture that I'm up to at the moment. But it, it, it gives us a spiritual lift and uh, invigorates us really just like the endorphins that are released um, into our body, even after some mild exercise that, that, that helps us, um, gives us some energy. And of course, it doesn't have to be in the morning. It can be any time of the day. If you need some smelling salts throughout the day, read some scripture. I mean, it is. It's literally life to our, to our spirit. And um, the uplifting scripture that I, I wanted to share with you um, today is one of my top five psalms. Um, and it contains my all-time favorite verse from the psalms, which is saying a lot considering there are 150 of them. But it's Psalm 63. And uh, I'm going to read from verses 1 to 8 from the NIV. Um, so be prepared to be refreshed and uplifted, okay, as I read it. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole body longs for you in a dry and parched land where there's no water. I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. This is my favourite line, okay? This is my favourite line in the 150 Psalms. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Some uh, translations say, my lips will ever praise you. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Verse 6, it says, On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I can sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. And it goes on. There's a final stanza, I would call it, of this hymn where it's sort of David's like, yep, you're about to destroy all my enemies, Lord. But we won't go there. So, um, 
But this beautiful psalm written by David when he was king of Israel was written at a time when he was in the wilderness of Judah, possibly fleeing from Absalom, his own son. I mean, far out. David, what a time he had, right? His own father-in-law and his own son both wanted to kill him. It was like, it's pretty amazing. I love the Psalms of David because they cry out to God right where he was at in that particular moment of his life. David didn't have to pretend before the Lord and neither do we. He wore his heart on his sleeve and he poured out his emotions. But what he did was he always came back to the foundational love and faithfulness and strength of God who protected him, encouraged him and lifted him up. And that's why I love the Psalms so much. Um, I was just, we were just chatting with um, Dave Kay last night. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but um, on YouTube, there's a conversation between Eugene Peterson, who wrote the message translation, and Bono. And they both, has anyone ever seen it? They both love the Psalms. And um, it's a facet, it just goes for 20 minutes. Have a look at it. It's just wonderful. Um, and I mean, Eugene Peterson's passed away now, but, um, you know, it was amazing because Bono, you know, one of the most famous musicians from U2 around the world, um, had discovered the, that this message um, paraphrase um, that, that Eugene Peterson had written. And, of course, Eugene Peterson's a poet. And, of course, songwriters are poets, really, you know. And, uh, and Bono was just fascinated by him. And, and he requested, like, to... Oh, actually, I think he, he offered to, for him to come to one of his concerts... And, and Eugene Peterson sort of said to his team and his wife, he's like, I don't know who he is. Like, who is he? And they're thinking, oh, my gosh, is he the only person who doesn't know who Bono is? And also he said, oh, sorry, I can't go because I've got a paper due or something. And, and they were like, oh, my gosh, who says no to, like, you know, the front row seats at a, at a U2 concert? Anyway, um, but in the end, they became really, really good friends. And there's this beautiful interview. They, they are, I think they might have actually written a... Um, a book or something about their love of the Psalms. Um, and uh, anyway, so that's just a um, something, an aside, but have a look at it. Um, it's, it's wonderful. I love Charles Spurgeon's commentary on this psalm um, when he says that there was no desert in his heart, though there was a desert around him. So, because David was connected to the Lord, because he was just abiding in him, he was with him, even through his challenges, even through this wilderness experience, whilst there might have been desert around him, there was no desert in David's heart. So, verse 1 says, Oh God, you are my God, Honestly, earnestly I seek you. So, when we declare and we remember that we're in an intimate, personal relationship with God, it revives us and it refreshes our spirit. I love that that's where David starts. He's like, oh God, you are my God. This is personal. If we're feeling tired and worn down, it's a great encouragement that Jesus, through whom all things were created in the heavens and the earth, is our personal friend. He's our Lord. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there's no water. The New King James Version, instead of saying my whole being, says my soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you, which represents the whole being, soul and flesh. If we're feeling spiritually dry or we just need topping up, it's the presence of God and his word that revives us. And here David's expressing just how much he needs the presence of God to sustain him. Just as important as water to keep him alive. Spurgeon writes, A weary place and a weary heart make the presence of God all the more desirable. A little bit what, like what um, uh, C.S. Lewis, that C.S. Lewis quote um, that Janelle um, had for us in her reflection that, yeah, so a weary place and a weary heart makes the presence of God all the more desirable. Verse 2 says, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. And we're singing about the King of glory this morning. David knew that being in the presence of the Lord was going to lift him up. And he wasn't looking to a place, but to a person. 
when I'm feeling tired or overwhelmed by challenges, knowing that the Lord is the all-powerful one gives me confidence because I know that it's not in my own strength that I have to rely. And remembering that Jesus is seated on the throne in glory and interceding on our behalf, that just lifts me up. I don't know about you, but that's an, that's an amazing thought, isn't it? Verse 3, as I say, my favourite. I, I, Brennan calls it the toothpaste rule. Once it's out there, you can't put it back in. I'm just going to say it. I really want to write a song about this psalm. I really want to write particularly a song about verse 3. <laughs> I've thought about it for years, so I'm just putting it out there now. I can't, it's like the toothpaste rule. I can't put it back in, so I've got to do it. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. My lips will ever praise you. What an amazing statement from David. The love of God is better than life itself. The life that he gave us and that he sustains. Acts 17, 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being. So this inspires David to praise even though he's in a wilderness situation. You know, we can always find a reason to praise him. And here, David gives us a key reason um, that will always apply no matter what situation that we're in. His very love for us is worth praising him forever. That alone his love for us, remembering that he so loved the world that he gave his only son. So no matter what circumstances there are, zeroing in and remembering his love for us that's better than life itself, oh, that just invigorates you, doesn't it? Verse 4, I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I'll lift up my hands. So let's be people who lift up our hands in the name of Jesus no matter what our circumstances there have been so many times when, you know, I felt discouraged or, or weary and I've put on some worship music and just like lifted up my hands in praise, except when I'm driving, <laughs> just one hand. No. <laughs> Don't you just, I just love cranking worship music up in the car, you know. Um, it's an act of surrender to the Lord and I feel so invigorated even after just five minutes. Verse 5, I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. We've actually eaten some beautiful meals the past week, I have to say. We've been catching up with people. Whether it's been for brekkie, lunch or dinner, I've, I've left feeling fully satisfied. And sometimes a little more than fully satisfied, more full <laughs> than satisfied. I'm like, oh, I really shouldn't have had that dessert. But it's, this is the spiritual satisfaction that comes from, from being in the presence of the Lord and inviting the Holy Spirit to be with us. Like that, you know, that beautiful metaphor of being in the presence of God and eating, being at his table, um, like we were eating the finest of foods. Verse 6, on my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. You know, when the hustle and bustle of the day quietens down and we're heading to sleep, hopefully. I know some people will have difficulty sleeping. But meditating on the love and the goodness of God is such a refreshing thing. Inviting the Holy Spirit even into our sleep and remembering that the Lord is with us through the night, I believe really gives us a peaceful sleep. Psalm 4, 8 says... I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Verse 7 says, Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. And um, I know this is a funny picture, but when I was putting, when I, I, I saw a picture here of like our outdoor awning um, at home, casting a, a cool shadow over a hot day and uh, the concrete gets really hot and it's, it's almost impossible to sit out there for too long um, sometimes. But as soon as you put the awning out, you can sit in the shadow um, that it casts and you can linger there. I mean, it's quite amazing really. 
and, and, but, you, but you have to actually stay close. You have to stay under the awning to get the benefit. Because as soon as you walk out, it's like oh, the heat. Go back under the awning and you can stay out there. So if we're close to the Lord and his presence, we know that we can get the protection that we need from him to not only receive shelter, but it enables us to sing through the circumstances in the shadow of his wings, in that, in that shelter. I, I love that. And verse 8 says, I cling to you, your right hand upholds me. And for me, this is a flotation ring picture, right? I mean, if you suddenly find yourself in the water and you don't mean to be in the water and there's a, um, what are they called? A life ring. I mean, you don't just look at it, do you? And go, oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. There's a life ring. <laughs> I see the red and white. No, no. You cling to it for dear life, literally, because that's what it is. And I'm like, God is our life ring. We want to be clinging to him. And then I think about, you know, John 15 and abiding in him. And he is the vine and we are the branches. And I'm like, wow, there's so much of that imagery in scripture. I'm like, we're probably not meant to just go, oh, God's here. Great. God's in the water. God's in my circumstances. And I just really feel the Holy Spirit on this. And I've, I've, whether you're here or you're in your lounge room at home, I hope, this, I hope you catch this this morning. And it's for all of us, for me too. I'm like, we don't just go, oh, good, God's in the water. And, and, and really, oh, Janelle's upstairs with the kids. But wow, when she talked about Peter and Jesus grabbing Peter's hand, he didn't just say, oh, good, Jesus is, Jesus is here and I'm sinking. No, what did he do? He reached up and grabbed the hand of Jesus. Cling to Jesus for dear life. His love is better than life itself. Wow. And nothing can separate us from God's love. So even though we might think, I've got this life ring, the Lord is here, but my circumstances are separating me from being able to cling to him. My circumstances are putting a wall between me reaching that life ring. That is not true. That is not the truth. The truth is, in Romans 8, 38, I am convinced, Paul writes, that nothing, and if someone could write about this, it's Paul. I mean, Paul endured shipwrecks and prison and the worst of all circumstances, and yet he could write... I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is amazing. And I mean, I wanted Psalm 63 to uplift you, but wow, like what an amazing scripture there in Romans. That's refreshing news. No circumstance can separate us from the love of God. Nothing in all creation. They are strong words from Paul. And I think that they're amazing to just remind us that God is with us. He is, his love is better than life itself. And uh, we, as we cling to him, as we, you know, and it's not about, you know, getting down on ourselves because we're like, oh, you know, I haven't read my Bible for like a few months or I, you know, I'm, I'm just not, my prayer life's not where it's meant to be. No, God's not a God of condemnation. He just wants relationship with us. You know, if, if there's somebody that we love in our life, whether it's a family member, our friend, we just want to really be with them, don't we? I mean, that's what I've, you know, the last couple of um, weeks we've sort of been getting together with people and it's like, oh, this is fantastic. Just being with, God just wants to be with us. And uh, so, but in his presence, there's that life and that refreshing. So can I just, you know, encourage you, um, you know, that, that as I say, uh, the, the, these scriptures are like, like the smelling salts to us. Um, for each day but at the same time let's not get you know discouraged if we're out of rhythm 
But, you know, I would guarantee you that if you are, like, just saying, I'm going to, no matter how I feel, I'm just going to read some scripture. I'm just going to read the verse of the day or I'm just going to read a gospel um, over the next couple of weeks, that that rhythm will just return and there's, you know, I mean, now I'm feeling, like, a little bit better after my Pilates, but I know that in, like, four weeks' time when, you know, that muscle sort of pain's going to ease a bit and I'm going to be feeling really strong and fit. And, um, well, that's the plan anyway. But I know, I know that as we get back into the rhythm of things, like it's just, it, it just flows beautifully. So I just want to encourage, I hope that's an encouragement to all of us. As I finish, and I just remembered, I didn't bring it up here, but I'm getting my phone. It's somewhere. Sorry, online people. I'll be back in a moment. Oh, here it is. Oh, because I, what I wanted to do was um, just read this in the, speaking of the message paraphrase, because um, it's just so beautiful. Oh, no, it's lost. My Bible app keeps freezing. I don't know why. I'll have to talk to, if anyone's got some ideas, let me know. I've updated it and everything, so, but it just keeps freezing, but it's okay. Um, it's amazing that we can just have this, isn't it, right? Um, okay, here we go. No, that's the NLT. I'm, 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 on, I'm on my way. Right. God, you, you're my God. I can't get enough of you. I've worked up such a hunger and thirst for God, traveling across um, dry and weary deserts. So here I am in the place of worship, my eyes open drinking in your strength and glory. In your generous love, I'm really living at last. My lips brim praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. My arms are like banners of praise to you. I eat my fill of prime rib and gravy. I smack my lips. It's time to shout praises. If I'm sleepless at midnight, if I spend the hours in grateful reflection, I spend the hours in grateful reflection because you've always stood up for me. I'm free to run and play. I hold on to you for dear life and you hold me steady as a post. Why don't we pray? Lord, we're so grateful for you, for your word, your word of life. We thank you that your love is better than even life itself. And because of that, Lord, we will praise you forever. Lord, we thank you that your word just refreshes us, brings life to us. We thank you, Lord, that you have given it to us as a gift and you've given us your great Holy Spirit to open our eyes, to see scripture in a new light, Lord, something that we might have read you know, a hundred times before, but Lord, you, your Holy Spirit just breathes new life on, on your word. And uh, so, Lord, we thank you that um, your word is spiritual food for us, that it sustains us, Lord, and, and, and just revives us, just like smelling salts just is a, a lift for us, Lord. And it, it's a guiding light for us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you, Lord, that you constantly refresh us. And when we come into your presence, Lord, we know that um, no matter what the circumstances are, that, Lord, we can, we can cling to you, that nothing, nothing can separate us from your great love. And so we just pray this morning that you would guide us um, deeper into your word, Lord. Help us to be in your rhythms, in step with your spirit, Lord, and just for hungering for more of your word that sustains us and refreshes us and gives us life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.